Do you often get these three birds on the screen confused? Or maybe you've seen these before and you didn't realize that these were separate species. Well, today we're gonna to clear away that confusion. So you'll be able to easily identify the Australian Swamp Hen, the Dusky Moorhen, and the Eurasian Coot. Hi, I'm Rob, organizer for the Birdwatch in Southeast Queensland Meetup Group. This video will be continuing our identification series. These are aimed mostly at beginners and people traveling to Australia. However, more advanced birders may be interested in the quirky facts and later sections on how to ID these birds by ear. Let's jump in. If you haven't watched our first identification video on butcher birds, then here's how we'll progress. First, I'll give you some broad info on the bird family. Next, I'll provide you with a bit of background about each species. This info will help us retain the identification rules covered later. We'll then cover how you can identify each one visually. And lastly, we'll go over how to ID by ear. The term water bird is a broad common name grouping used to categorize any bird that lives in or around the water. This group contains many subgroups called families. One family you're probably familiar with is the waterfowl, which consists of ducks, swans, and geese. The three species we'll be covering today are in a different family known as the rails. Australia has many other rails, but these three are by far the most common. They can be found across most of Australia, mainly in locations with an abundance of fresh water. Our first species is the Australasian swamp hen, also known as purple swamp hen, and in New Zealand, pukeko. The swamp hen's body is primarily dark blue with a black back. The broad red bill adjoins a fleshy area that extends to the middle of the head. This area is called a shield, and it has two known purposes. One, to protect its head while it pushes its bill through reeds and other vegetation and two, to indicate social status. A 2017 study reported that the swamp hen's shield changes size depending on its hormone levels. The higher the level of dominance, the greater the size of the shield. The shield can decrease in size in as little as a week in response to aggressive challenges from other males. Besides its coloring, another distinguishing feature of this species is its strong feet and long toes, which they use to dig, rip, and tear thick vegetation. They are often seen balancing on one leg while they eat with the other, just like a parrot. I took this photo on the right. You can see the swamp hen chowing down on freshly flowered sweet pea. This is in Roma Street Garden. I'm pretty sure the gardeners wouldn't be very happy about their work being destroyed, but this is what swamp hen eat. Swamp hens can be very territorial and aggressive towards other birds. Territory disputes between swamp hens can be vicious. Two to four birds will run towards each other, jump feet first, ripping and pulling their claws at their opponents. Swamp hens can occasionally attack, kill, and eat offspring of other waterfowl. I witnessed this firsthand as a child. I was admiring a group of recently hatched wood duck ducklings. Suddenly a swamp hen charged at the group, caught one, pecked it to death, then proceeded to eat in it. I was actually quite horrified about the whole thing. Okay, that's it for swamp hen for now. Let's jump over to dusky moorhen. The dusky moorhen's name requires a bit of explanation. Long ago, the term moor was used to refer to a marshy area. That usage has since fallen out of use. So moorhen is basically marshy area hen, which isn't really a great name because they don't just hang around marshes. So I've discussed the moorhen bit. So now we have the term dusky. When I first started bird watching, I always thought this term referred to the bird's preference for that period of day, dusk. However, dusky is actually used as an adjective to mean something dark or not very bright in color. This species resides in Australia and neighboring countries. International viewers may be familiar with the closely related common gallinule and Eurasian moorhen, or common moorhen. Younger and non-breeding moorhens are much duller and browner in plumage, and the bill and shield varies from black to yellow. Now onto one of my favourite rails, the Eurasian coot, also known as the common coot elsewhere. As the name suggests, this species is found across Europe, Asia, and of course Australia. Visually, the Eurasian coot is all black with a white shield and bill. It's a similar size to the moorhen, but it appears rounder. Close up, the coot looks distinct. From a distance, however, it's often confused with the dusky moorhen. The word coot is believed to come from the sound it makes. This word has been used in the bird sense since the 14th century. You might have heard the terms, ya old coot, or as bald as a coot. This usage was not recorded until later in the 17th century. It's believed that people made the connection between the bird's white shield and a man's bald head rather than the other way around. So if you ever get moorhen and coot confused, just think bald as a coot. Immature coot look different from the adults. They have a wispy grey plumage with a white chin and neck, along with a yellow bill. 
The female coot can lay between 4 to 12 eggs. They tend to be optimistic when estimating the amount of food that can be supplied. Only in the best years is there enough food for all the chicks. Most years chicks die from starvation rather than predation. Typically almost half of the chicks die within the first weeks of hatching when they're most dependent on the adults for food. A chick that is greedy or incessantly calling may be abandoned or even punished in the form of a shake and a dunk or even a bite. Sometimes this punishment is so rough that it will kill the chick. You can check out David Attenborough's Life of Birds if you'd like more info on this. The main confusion with these species is that not only do they look similar to beginners, their names are much alike. Sure, when all three are standing side by side, we're able to see that they look different. However, in the field, we don't often get this privilege. So like in the last video, this diagram shows how the rails compare to each other. The pigeon, house sparrow, and can of coke have been included, so you're better able to gauge the size. Starting from the right, we have the largest and slightly hunched swamp hen. Moving left, we have the dusky moorhen, which some say its shape is a cross between a chicken and a duck. And we'll skip over the pigeon. Finally, we have the Eurasian coot. Being the outlier, it has a white shield and a more rounded shape. You also notice here that the moorhen and coot have a more duck-like posture, whereas the swamp hen has a different build with longer stilt-like legs. Tips for visual ID. Here are two rules you can use to identify these species visually. One, look at the shield. If it's red, it's either a swamp hen or a moorhen. If it's white, then it's as bald as a coot. Two, the plumage is usually the giveaway. If it's dark blue, then it's a swamp hen. If it's dusky, then it's a moorhen. And if it's black, then it's a coot. To help us associate the appearance with the name, we can use sapphire swamp hen, muddy moorhen, and charcoal coot. This rule can be a bit cumbersome in low light. In such cases, you'll need to refer back to the overall shape and bill color. So here we have multiple photos of all three species. Note that the moorhen does have a tinge of blue, but it's not that rich sapphire blue that the swamp hen has. I'm not going to go into much detail on the hatchling and juvenile forms of these birds, as they all mostly look like black balls of fluff. They're typically in this form for less than a month. It's best to differentiate them by their nearby parents. Now let's move on to learning the calls of these water birds. Differentiating rail calls can be tricky as they're usually only one syllable. However, with the info we learned earlier, along with our memory device for visual ID, it will be easier to commit these to memory. Don't worry if you don't get these straight away, it takes time and practice. The swamp hen has an abrupt and almost aggressive call. Let's have a listen. Remember how I said earlier that the swamp hen can be a bully to other birds and can tear things apart with its feet? We can use this info to associate what we hear with other memories we have of the swamp hen. So when you hear this abrupt call, you can think of how other birds are scared of the swamp hen's scary feet. So add into our memory device, scary sapphire swamp hen. This next recording has two dusky moorhen calls. A high pitched cheep, similar to the swamp hens, but not as aggressive. The dusky moorhen also has a lower mournful call, which is the one we're going to focus on today. Let's have a listen. Notice how it's less aggressive and softer than the swamp hens? To continue our memory device, we'll use mournful muddy moorhen. The coot's call is short, lower pitched, and gravelly compared with the swamp hen and moorhen. Recalling the parenting style, you can imagine that their throat's sore and gravelly from constantly scolding their chicks. So added to the device, we now have callous charcoal coot. By the way, I don't want you leaving this video thinking that any of these birds are actually scary or callous. Please keep in mind that I only singled out these behaviours to aid our memorization. A behaviour that sometimes, or even rarely occurs, is not indicative of how all individuals within a species will act. So please treat them all with respect. And that's it for the calls. Next time you're in the field, try to guess which one's calling. This will reinforce what you've learned. Let's summarise what we've covered. For visual ID, we first want to look at the shield. Then we'll look at the plumage to narrow it down. Is the plumage blue like a sapphire? Or is it muddy? Or is it black? 
To ID by call, we want to remember some of those behaviors we learned about earlier. Is the call aggressive and scary? Or mournful? Or maybe it's gravelly? I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to see more videos on identification and bird watching techniques, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Finally, don't forget that if you live or you're visiting Southeast Queensland, you can join us for our free monthly bird walks. Find out more on Facebook and meetup.com. Wishing you fantastic bird watching and see you next time.